All right, now let's get into uh, file input and file output, reading and writing files. Uh, this is very useful, especially if you want to keep data that uh, uh, from from a, from a program you, you run your program, you want to save any information, uh, you're going to need a file. Or if you want to transfer data from uh, one location to another, you're probably going to need a file. Uh, imagine having a, you program a game and you want to keep track of the high score. Well, you can have a variable called high score, set it out to zero. As soon as it runs, you know, you're going to play the game for a little while, you're going to get your high score set, and then uh, the program ends, you turn off the computer or whatever, you close your game, and you come back to it later, uh, it didn't save the information. As soon as you launch your program again, it just resets it back to zero, and you're like, oh no, I don't have my high score, I don't remember what it was. You're probably going to want to write that out to a file at the end of each game. Um, that way, when you launch your program, you can read the file, uh, and get the, the current high score, right? something to that effect. Uh, some concept there. And uh, yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff you can do with, with, with files. Uh, in this case, we're just going to do some simple text files, reading and writing text. Right? So the first uh, example here is going to read a, a regular text file. Um, so Cody is going to give us a file path uh, called p and a string called s from the command line. Okay. Uh, Codio wants us to output the number of times the string s appears in the file that is uh, read in. Okay, so uh, you'll have this here, the import sys. That's going to be necessary for um, Codio in order to read the input from the command line. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily need it in mind, but I'll leave it here. Uh, and then uh, I'm, I am setting my values here because I, I don't have Codio to run it against. I'm not running this from the command prompt. Uh, I'm running it from inside uh, Visual Studio Code here. Um, but yours will look a little bit different. It'll probably look something to the effect of sys.argv1, right? Something to that effect. That's what gets the value from Codio. So uh, make sure yours does not actually hard code the files, the file path, and the string like mine does. Okay. So we're going to have a, a value p, that's going to be the path to the file, and then we're going to have a value s, that's going to be the string to look for inside uh, that file. Okay, so anytime we're reading or writing a file, we need something called a, a file handler, which basically gives us the, the capability to read or write to a file. Okay, and uh, there's a function that we can call, which is a pr pretty simple function called um, open. All right, so we'll open the file, and uh, what that'll do is we just give it a path to look for, and now it opens up the file. Cool. How cool is that? Now, it does return a file handler. That's what we need to, in order to manipulate and, and, and interact with our file. So we need to set that uh, to something. <clears throat> I'm going to call mine just input file. You can call it whatever you want, uh, anything that makes sense. You could call it handler. You could call it file. You could call it whatever makes sense to you. All right, so now we have uh, what this is going to do. It's going to open the file at the path provided, and then uh, set this variable to the file handler that will be able to access that file. Okay, uh, so that opens it. Now, you don't have to when you're reading, but you can specify a, uh, a mode, the mode to open the file. Uh, there's a few different modes. Basically, there's read mode and write mode. Those are going to be the two most common. <clears throat> And uh, if you don't specify anything here, it defaults to read. So that's the same thing as, uh, as that. Okay. Um, it, usually it's nice to be explicit. Just say, hey, I'm opening this up for reading. That way when you're looking at your code later, you can say, all right, I know I'm opening this for reading. Um, and you'll see the one for writing later. Now uh, what we need to do is we need to read the data. So we're going to go input. Input file, because input is a different thing. Input file, and we're just going to call read on it. Okay, well, that's pretty straightforward, right? So this read function is part of the file handler object, right? So in order to call read, you need to tell it what to operate the read on. In this case, open is not part of any specific object. It's just into Python, right? It's built in. Um, you don't need to, to, to have that dot operator on, on anything. Uh, but the read function is not part of just Python. It's part of the uh, file handler object. So you need to call input file or whatever your file name, your, your handler name is, dot read, and that'll read it. Okay. Now, this does return a value, so we do need to set it equal to something. So I'm going to call it I don't know, contents. 
<coughs> right? Now this read function, what it does is it just goes through and it starts at the very beginning of the file, reads all the way to the end of the file, and puts that, whatever it found, inside contents, and it is a string type. Okay, it's one big long string. Well, it could be long, it depends on how long the file is, um, but it's just one long string. All right, now we finished reading the file, so, uh, and we have the data stored into a variable. We don't need the file open anymore. So now all we need to do is close it. Input file dot close. Again, the, um, the close function is part of the file handler, so you have to call it <coughs> with that dot operator on it. Right? Input file, or whatever your handler name is, dot close. <coughs> so here, we, what we've done is we've opened the file, we've read the file, and now we close the file. It's as simple as that. Now this close function is very important. Make sure you do that anytime you, you manually open your file like this. You do have to manually close it. And that's because if you leave it open, if I didn't have this line here, uh, Python would open up the file, it would read the file, and then it would do whatever I needed to, and it would never close it. Now if I try to run the program again and try to open it, or if another program tries to open the same file, uh, there may be a problem. It might say, hey, I'm sorry, I can't open this. There's already another program that has it open. So that's going to cause some problems. So make sure you close it. And I'll show you another way here in just a little while that is actually a little better than this that will automatically close it for you. But um, that's coming up here in just a minute. So now that we have, this is the content of whatever the file was. Right? And I'm going to show you my file. <clears throat> right, here's my file. Right? That's all I have. I have one line, uh, and that's it. So now once I do this and I read, contents is now equal to a string that holds all of that. Pretty straightforward. Easy enough. So now what we need to do <clears throat> is we need to search in that string and count the number of times that this value appears, s, which in this case I just made the letters i n or n. All right, so I'm going to count it, and if we look at our file, we can look through that. Uh, Ten times five people in. Oh, there's one. Okay. Oh, well, well, those who know. Oh, and there it is again. It'll also find the ones inside middle of words. Okay, so we should get the value of two when we run this uh, after we after we process this correctly. All right. So since the contents is a string, okay. Uh, we can call a, a, an operator using the dot operator. We can call a function on a string. That's pretty nice. It's called count, right? And that will go and automatically search through the string and count the number of times. It'll return an integer for you. <clears throat> the number of times a value appears. And that's going to be whatever we type in here, right? Whatever you want uh, to, to count inside that string. Well, we have a variable that holds that value, and that is the variable s. Okay? So that's it. Now return, remember, contents the dot count, it's going to return a number. Okay? So we can do uh, something like this. Okay? So now we have it's going to go and count it, and then it's going to tell you, all right, that's how many it is, and it's going to assign it to this variable. Now we can actually print it. Print number. Okay? So anytime a, ver uh, a function returns something, you have to do something with it. If this was not here, it would just run it and go, oh, whatever, I don't, I don't care where the value is going, move on. Uh, but we want to save that. We want to, we want to actually do something with the value that's returned. <clears throat> so now we can print the number, uh, or you can do something that's uh, kind of like this. You can chain things together, which is very common. So you can use a function call inside another function call, and it happens all the time. It's actually very common to do. and. Uh, uh, it simplifies things, so now instead of having two different lines, I now only have one line, and it does the same exact thing. <clears throat> Whenever you have a function call inside a function call, it always does the innermost function call first. Uh, so the, the, most, the innermost parentheses, in this case, is s, so it's going to get the value. It basically replaces that with that, and then it runs this function, okay? And then whatever this returns, uh, and then it runs the outside function. So it always works its way inside to out. All right, so let's run this and uh, see what happens. We should get two. There it is, two. Okay, and you can put whatever you want to search for. I don't know, let's do instead of, uh, boo, 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 boo. let's do that. We'll run that, and it found one. Okay, and that's because since I did, you'll say, wait a minute, those isn't there twice. Yes, it is, but this one has a capital T, and that one is a lowercase t. So it only found it one time. <clears throat> All right, so that's reading a file. Oh, and I was going to show you the, uh, so the other way you can do this in a, a little bit more of a better way, 
more, um, yeah, uh, it's a better way to do it, is slightly differently. And I'm going to just comment this out, and that way I can keep it there. So remember, anytime you open up a file, you have to manually close it. Well, there's a, there's a way you can do this with Python that will automatically close the file for you. So in this case, you use the with keyword, and then you do your open just like normal. Right? You specify your mode or whatever, and then you give it the, the variable name. Okay, input file. All right. <clears throat> so this line is the exact same thing as this line. Okay. Now we are it's the the with keyword does specify a block, so you have to have the colon at the end of it, and then we just do what we need to. Contents equals input file dot read. Right, so that'll read. That's uh, that's obviously the same exact line. I uh, no need to change that one. Uh, but then that's it. You don't have to have this close one. You don't have to manually close the file because Python will do that for you automatically as soon as it ends this block. Okay. So it's a that's a, a better practice to do. <coughs> Excuse me, because it's a little bit safer. It's better and it automatically does stuff for you. You don't then have to think about closing the file. Did I close it already? Did I not? You don't have to think about it. It automatically releases the, the resources uh, that you opened up using this uh, this line here. Okay, so in the future you'll see me use this structure instead of this. It is a better practice, it's a little safer, cleaner, and, uh, and yeah, um, so let's move on. All right, the next part is is writing a file. That's a combination of reading and then writing. So we're going to read a file, uh, process something, and then we're going to write the, 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 the value back. Okay? So here we're going to be provided a file path again uh, for input. That's going to be the file path of i, or the variable name i. A file path for uh, output, which is o, uh, a string called s, and then um, another string called t. So what they want us to do is read the file in i, uh, look for the, the value s and replace it with what's in t and then write the new string out the new contents with the replaced strings uh, out to the file in o yeah it's it's kind of kind of complicated <coughs> hopefully i can make this a little clearer um, and then this last part here you should replace o if it already exists and i'm going to show you kind of what they mean by that uh, here in just a minute so Yes, the um, variable names are terrible. Okay, I, O, S, T. What do those even mean? It's really hard to, to read. Um, I recommend using much more descriptive names for your variables. So instead of I, maybe input path. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Instead of O, maybe output path. Right? Makes sense. Uh, S, I don't know, maybe find string, and then T, be replace string, or whatever. Whatever makes sense. Typically, you want to have something that makes a lot more sense instead of just these typical I's, O's, you know, just one single letters. They're really not good practice. Um, now, again, okay, in, in Codio, they're going to give you the, these values. I don't have Codio to run against, so uh, I have to set my own values here. <laughs> you should not be setting your own values. If you do, you're probably going to get some bad output uh, or errors or something to that effect, okay? So first thing they want us to do is is to read the file, okay? So again, I'm using this uh, structure here with open, and we're going to read from the input file first, I, and we want it as the read mode. You don't have to specify the R there for read mode because it does that by default, but we'll put it in, in there just for uh, the sake of consistency. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. And we'll call it, uh, I don't know, read file, something to that effect. All right, and then contents. We can use the same variable names uh, if you want to, that's fine. Um, equals well, our file handler dot read. Ah, don't need those in Python. All right, so this is basically the same exact structure as with the, the, the previous example where we just read a file. So first we read the file, we get it into the contents. Now contents is going to be a string of the full uh, text of the file, just one big long string. In this case, that same string that we had before in our other file, <clears throat> we're going to reuse that. Okay, so contents is now equal to that. Now what we want to do is replace any time it has uh, s with the value in t. Okay. Um, 
and then we need to so so contents remember contents is a string so we can call another function on it remember we had the one earlier uh, contents.count that was a, a string function that we could call there's another one called replace string dot replace uh, so contents dot replace the, the first uh, argument that you pass it needs to be the value to the old value right the one you're replacing and that's s and then the new value is t okay it's as simple as that so what this will do is it'll go through this string contents look for an s if it finds it it's going to replace it with t and then once it does that it returns the whole thing out um, to a new string okay so it doesn't actually modify what's inside contents so we need a new uh, I don't know we'll just call it new string <coughs> okay so there we have it so that's going to go out and it's going to look for any time I have the word no with a k k n o w and it's going to replace it with understand all right and then it's going to set that new string to new string uh, so that was simple right now we need to write the file out <coughs> So we're going to do almost the same thing as, as reading the file. I'm going to use this with uh, structure. Now instead of doing it to the input file, I want to do the output file, which is now in O. Okay. And our mode is not going to be read mode, but write mode. Okay. And then, I don't know, let's call it write file. Again, this is a block, so it has to have the colon at the end. <clears throat> um, all right. And then we call we just we need to to write to that file. So write file is our handler, and we're going to call write on it, <coughs> and we're going to pass in the value to write. So here you'll see here it's it's expecting about an argument uh, of text to write, and the value that we need to write back is new string, and that's it. And then. <coughs> Excuse me. And then as soon as it runs this line, it finishes this block and it automatically closes the um, the the file handler for us. So I know that uh, the whole when you were reading the, the instructions, you probably thought, oh wow, this is so complicated. I have no idea what I'm going to do. But it turns out the entire meat and potatoes is only a whole five lines of code. Uh, so super simple. Uh, when, when you break things down and, and you kind of know what's what's going on here. Um, yep. Now I just want to mention here, so I, I specified the write mode, I'm sorry, the read mode up here, which is the, the letter R, and then the, the write mode down here for W. If I had done R here instead, the file handler is not open for writing, so it's going to throw an error when you try to write to it. So that's why specifying the mode is important. Now, uh, I'll bring your attention back to this up here where it says you should replace O if it already exists. Um, when you do the, the write mode, specifying here with the letter W, what that does is it opens up the file for writing, and then when you write, okay, I call write on it, it's going to overwrite anything that's in the file. So any contents that were there are going to be replaced by whatever is in here. Okay, So that's what they mean up here by you should replace O if it already exists. So that's important to know. If you have a, a if you're trying to write to a file and you don't want to just overwrite everything that's in there, you're going to want to use a different mode. That's called the append mode, which would just be the letter A, ironically. And um, yeah, so the W will will write over whatever is already in there, if there's anything in there. Obviously, if it's a new file, it's not going to overwrite anything because there's nothing to overwrite. Uh, but that's kind of what they mean, all right? So uh, that should work. And let's go ahead and run this. And what we should get, okay, here you can see, here's my file to write. It is currently empty. There's nothing in there. All right, what it's going to do is it's going to read this file, and then it's going to look through for the word no, and it's going to replace that with understand. Okay, I hope you understand what's going on there. So when I run this, let's run that. Boom, done. There's no output in this case, uh, except to the file. So if we go back to the file, we should see, there it is. <clears throat> and the word understand has been replaced uh, into the spot where no was recently, uh, previously. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. That is just basic file input and file output. Okay, basics. There's a lot more you can do with files, and we'll see that uh, maybe in, a, uh, in the future. Okay.